Viewers, if you remember, a few days ago, I made a video about an application that uses AI called Drag Yorgan or Dragan. This was the most controllability we have ever seen for AI art thus far. I mean, you could drag faces around, you could change the size of things. It was absolutely insane. And up until that point, you really couldn't use it. You could just look at the videos of the demo. But now we actually have a Google collab where we can try this thing out. And we have a little mini demo that's also available on Hugging Face. I'll link them both down below completely free to use and easy to set up. We're going to be doing some experimenting with this thing today, and I'm very excited to try it out. So viewers, I'll link this down below, but to try it in collab, you click this link right here and you are brought to this Google collab page. What you want to do is click this little run button up in the top left hand corner of the screen. And as this code is running, you're going to want to scroll down and wait until you see running on local URL and running on public URL. You're going to want to click on running on public URL here. And it's going to go ahead and open up drag your GAN in another page. And this is where the fun begins. All right, viewers. So I've created a brand new, but rather creepy image for us to modify here. Of course, the GAN generated this image. You do that by clicking the new image button over here. Our first step is to highlight the mask, which is going to essentially select the area that we want moved. So let's say I want to drag this guy's mouth downwards. What we want to do is Make sure we're in the draw a mask mode up here at the top and then start to highlight and select his mouth. So I'm going to do that here and I'm going to make sure that it's all filled in. So this is the area that we want filled. I then go to set up handle points and the first point that I'm going to click here is the initial spot. So I'll click right on his mouth there to set that up. It then has to reload everything to set that point. But there it is. It's a blue point right on his mouth. And yeah, I want to drag his mouth downward. So I'm going to go ahead and click on his chin here. And that's going to set up the point that is going to be dragged to. So once that's all set up, we have our blue point and our red point. We click the drag it button. And now slowly but surely, it's going to generate each individual image in 20 steps of the mouth being dragged to that point. And it does take quite a lot of time because this is running on the hugging face servers, but eventually it's going to try to drag the point. And guys, finally, as you can see, we've landed on point 20, which is the farthest down that it went. You could up this iterations and we get closer and closer to this final point. But here you can see it actually does create a video for you of the slow dragging process. So you can see his mouth slowly got dragged down there. His glasses also seem to have morphed into his face as the process occurred, but that's okay. It's a pretty cool looking little animation though. Let's go ahead and try to upload our own image to drag around and modify. So one issue that I'm noticing when I upload my own image is when I go to the handle points an error occurs. So I'm not sure if that is working just yet inside of this collab. They do have a few others for us to pick from like the cat one. We go ahead and this will generate a brand new cat for us. Uh, this is pretty scary, I think. Uh, let's see if we could drag this downwards, maybe. Select this handle point, and we'll just maybe turn his head a little bit to the side. As you can see, with the lower resolution, it generates images quite a lot faster and drags them around at a much more rapid rate very similar to what we saw in the demo. As you can see, you always do get that video as well. I do recommend testing this out first inside of a lower res image because it's a lot faster. Oh my God, look at this. Look at this image of a cat. I have no idea what style game was thinking, but this is absolutely terrifying. All right, now we've got a nice close up of a cat. This time I set my max iterations a lot higher. We'll go all the way up to like 150. I want the cat to completely turn his head the other way. So I'm going to go ahead and select his entire face here just like this. And then we'll do our handle points like so click the drag it button again this one's so much lower resolution so we're gonna get instant frames and there we go here's our final image the point never really quite made it here but something very interesting did happen see if we go back and watch this video you can see it tried to sort of drag the points more towards the red one but in reality what happened is the cat's face just slowly zoomed more and more out and we actually got to see more and more of the cat so it was like a a pinch and drag zoom out almost is what happened. If you fast forward the video, you can really see this happen. See, there it is, the initial image, and then zooms all the way out. Pretty crazy stuff. All right, now we've got an image of a horse. All right, I'm just going to highlight the horse's face here. 
And we'll go ahead and set our handle points up, obviously one on the horse, and let's just drag his head, you know, all the way over here. Let's just do something crazy. We'll set our iterations to 45, and then we'll drag it. I wonder what it's going to try to do to this horse's head here. I I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. It seems to err on the side of caution more than anything else, preventing really f any crazy stuff to happen, like eyeballs flying around everywhere changing the generation completely so it might just completely ignore my request to drag it and more or less that seems to be what happened it just essentially kept the point in the same place and ignored my request to drag his head all the way up here obviously the ideal method for this ai is going to be running it on your own machine at home where you can drag stuff in real time Let's see if we can make this horse's head bow down a little bit and we'll set our points up. It seems that the only thing that's happening is maybe the horse's nose is getting longer. I'm not exactly sure. It might not be listening to my command very well. It is pretty crazy that all of these images are generated in real time. The GANs are incredibly fast at generating. And it really seems as though my request was again just kind of ignored by the AI more or less. It did not really want to modify this all that much. Let's see if you could just avoid doing a mask altogether. Like, let's say I just want to select this guy's eye. Mm, it does not seem that this works either, so you definitely need the mask or it's not going to work. This website known as OpenGV Lab also has Dragon as well. It's pretty interesting because it seems that they've, like, added it to intern GPT, which is like a chatbot you can type based off of OpenAI. And for some reason, the chatbot seems to have his face in there. Oh, it seems like it can just read what the image is. Either way, we can actually use Dragurgan on this site as well. Although it works in pretty much the same exact way where you can just set your two points up and click drag it and it will try to drag the image around in pretty much the exact same way that it would on the other one. So there actually is another method of this that we can try. Drag Your Gan actually has a sister project known as User Controllable LT, User Controllable Latent Transformer. And this also has a demo on Hugging Face that we can use as well. So let's give this one a shot instead. This seems a lot more of what people were expecting from Drag Your Gan, at least ergonomically. And this is especially visible in the little demo video that he has provided for us. You can click random sample to generate a bunch of different cats until you find one you like. You can also change the style and then you can start morphing around and dragging the image, doing different zooms on it. You can actually set points up as well, which is pretty cool. As you can see, he adds the points on the cat and it sort of holds the cat's ears there and allows you to drag things separately. So this is a little bit simpler yet maybe a little bit easier to use, a little bit easier to figure out. I have a feeling that people will like the ergonomics and the controllability of this demo a little bit better, although technically it's less impressive, we could say. But as you can see, this one also works on different faces as well, so you can drag faces around, completely changing their age in real time. And like I said, we do have a free demo for this as well on Hugging Face, so I'll try this out in a second. This still blows me away, the fact that you can do these things with cars and it like completely changes the style of the car, trying to keep the color pretty similar every time, which is cool, but yeah, you can see all of these different automobiles and it's just something that I never really would have expected, but uh, yeah, we'll definitely have to give that a shot as well. Even with architecture, I mean, this is almost a glimpse into the future of architecture design where you can drag different elements around and see them morph and change in real time to suit your particular needs. I mean, the software that we're going to be able to create with AI technology in the future is going to be truly mind-blowing. I think we can all agree on that one. So these are the different pre-trained models that we can select from. I guess we'll just start off with the cat. But yeah, as you can see, we can just sort of drag this cat's face around in real time. And it works pretty well. It's a little bit laggy, but yeah, like let's say I want the cat's face in the middle here. You can double click and add some points onto his ears. And now it's going to try to keep his ears in the same place as I drag this around. And it sort of works pretty well. The controls are a little bit difficult to use because it is like a hugging face demo. We'll lock his eyes in place. We'll lock his nose in place. What happens if we drag now? Oh, okay. It does not like that. Yeah, the more points you add, the more uh, screwed up it can get. I love the change style button. It's like all these different kinds of cats you would never expect to see. Really cool. Let's go ahead and try the car now. All right, we'll start out with this car. We'll lock the wheels in place, maybe. And we'll try to make the car a little bit taller, perhaps. Is that going to work? It's definitely getting skinnier. I think it is technically making the car a little bit taller. It's changing the entire camera angle. 
Interesting. The, the locking points don't really work too, too well, in my opinion. They also have an anime one. Oh, oh my. Drag this anime character around. And this one's actually staying very consistent. I guess it was trained on a lot of anime. Or maybe all anime characters just look alike. Yeah, there's some weird visual anomalies that are happening in the top hand of the corner there. Yeah, you can just drag your anime characters all around. I mean, this one's a little bit less coherent than Drag Your Gan, I think. But again, I still think it's a little ergonomically better. And it's an easier demo to understand, really. And we've got the church one here where we can drag it and it just completely changes the type of church as you drag the whole demo around. Very interesting. Let's see if we can like lock his eyes in here. We'll lock his mouth. We'll start to drag his nose around. The locking is working pretty good on this one, for sure. I guess it does depend on the model for how good the locking is actually able to work. So we'll just drag I guess he's looking down the more I drag. You are you are just kind of limited to this box in terms of how far you can drag around and stuff. It's very interesting to see this guy's age and, and like what he looks like change slowly as I move this around. Well, that's good to know that the locking actually works fairly well for this. Now, what happens if we change the style of this guy? Oh, I guess we change styles. Yeah, this one's pretty good though. I, I do like this. I can see how this could be used for something like animation in the future as well where it's actually very decent at keeping a consistent character over time. I mean, it's not perfect, obviously, by any means, because this is just brand new tech. But once it gets good, man, we're going to be able to do very consistent character animation. And I mean, consistent character animation with AI is already possible, but you still need like very advanced understanding of the technology first and foremost, but also of visual effects. The cat still probably is my favorite little demo, though, because you can really, really manipulate these cats all around and just move their heads from side. Oh, my God, his head just got squished there for a second. Oh, and he's coming closer to the camera. You can zoom in really far and really, really close. I do like this, though. I do, I do like this demo. It's pretty fun to mess around with. Not necessarily very useful for anything yet, but it's a cool glimpse at the future of this tech. So viewers, I think that Drag Your Gan has quite a lot of potential, especially if we could get it working with images that I've already created, so uploading my own images essentially, but that wasn't working when I tried to test it today. And it really does seem like, especially from these demos that they have going on over here, that smaller point distances work a lot better than larger ones like I was trying to do today. But the code is released, so we can expect, you know, more updated versions of this and stuff that we could probably run at home on our own machines, which is very exciting. Viewers, please test this thing out. For now, at least, this isn't really the most usable thing in the world, but of course, this technology evolves rapidly and that is going to change in the near future, I'm sure. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.